Hey everybody, David here, and today I want to talk about some breaking news that dropped. Something that could probably uh, strengthen my theory on Doctor Strange uh, being connected to Spider-Man 3, uh, possibly uh, that uh, video that I made like two, three days ago. So it's still up there. You could go and check that theory out on how it might affect a couple of the movies in the MCU. Well, today it looks like Benedict Cumberbatch is confirmed to be returning as Doctor Strange for Spider-Man 3. Uh, so, wow, this is a crazy news. I read this the, like not too long ago and I was like, holy shit, my, my theory, this, this could be it. This could be, this could be giving us the Spider-Verse that many have been already speculating ever since Jamie Foxx was announced to be returning as Electro in the upcoming uh, movie. So some people are wondering, like, how did how is Jamie Foxx coming back if he died? Uh, if this is connected to the Amazing Spider-Man two, uh, how how could this be possible? Remember, these this is the movies. Anything is possible. A writer will come up with anything with how a character will come back. Uh, for all we know, he looks like he evaporated, but then he actually escaped. And he, there's been many scenarios where a villain died and then another movie will bring that character back if they really wanted to. Remember, Loki died in the first Thor movie and then that little end credit scene that we got in the first Thor movie, apparently that was added to the last minute when they realized they were bringing him back uh, for the Avengers. So, and and let's also remember he was supposed to also die in Thor The Dark World. Thankfully, that movie, they realized right away that they didn't want to kill him. So, uh, they they uh, wrote, rewrote some of the scenes in that movie to have Loki still alive by the end. And then, let's also remember Avengers Endgame killed Loki. And now we're getting a Loki TV series, which is a spinoff from... <laughs> which which apparently is the Loki that was in 2012 during Endgame. So if a writer really wants to bring back a character, they will find a way to bring back a character. They're, they're in, when it comes to movies, especially movies that are based off comic books, comic books which have killed characters multiple times and have brought them back, they will find a way to bring that character back if they really find a useful way to bring them back. So... Whether the explanation is good or not, we'll we'll see. Again, this is all speculation because we don't really know if Jamie Foxx is actually playing the same Electro from The Amazing Spider-Man 2. It's all speculation. But if you're going to ask people, it, it does seem very likely. You don't reca you don't bring back a previous actor to have them play a character they already played but in a different way. You're bringing him back for a reason. Because you want him back as that character. Now, of course, Jamie Foxx said that he's not going to be blue. He's going to be his regular looking self. But maybe in an all new costume. We'll see. Again, all speculation. But it is interesting now that we got this confirmation about Benedict Cumberbatch. Who we know is going to be playing around in the multiverse. In his own film, Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness. Uh, now having to help Spider-Man because apparently he's word has it is that he's going to be playing a mentor type role. Something similar to what Iron Man was in Spider-Man Homecoming and how Nick Fury was in Spider-Man Far From Home. Uh, or Nick Fury and Happy Hogan, I guess, uh, played by Jon Favreau. Uh, so in this case, uh, Doctor Strange will be that mentor-like figure. Now why would he have to be mentoring Peter Parker? Well, probably because Peter Parker is probably going to have to deal with the multiverse. And if you're going to deal, put Spider-Man in that kind of situation, give him somebody that has experience in that type of world, which by that point, I think Doctor Strange will have experience in the multiverse. So, I don't know. Things are looking very likely. I also heard recently, uh, I was listening to last uh, yesterday's episode of SEN Live today, and one of the members on that podcast uh, were saying that they heard that uh, Kirsten Dunst and Dane DeHaan are in negotiations. Now, they they said it was rumors, 
But it is interesting that they are hearing rumors like that. So now you, it would make you wonder, like, why haven't we heard anything about Tobey Maguire or Andrew Garfield yet in negotiations? I have a theory on that now. I think they already talked to Andrew Garfield and Tobey Maguire months ago. Uh, but they managed to keep it under wraps. And I have a feeling they are already locked down. They're just not going to confirm it yet until the right time. I could be wrong. Maybe I'm letting myself up for a big disappointment. But I, I have a feeling. You don't bring back Jamie Foxx. <laughs> and now rumors about Kirsten Dunst and, uh, and Dane DeHaan. And you brought back J.K. Simmons. If you are going the multiverse route, you bring back Andrew Garfield and Tobey Maguire also. Because seeing that team up happen with Tom Holland, that would be like the ultimate geekgasm. <laughs> it would worry me for DC's part because, you know, Hollywood, they pay attention to what other studios are doing. And I don't want them to bring back Christian Bale and George Clooney and Val Kilmer to team them up with Ben Affleck and Michael Keaton just because while well, Spider-Man's doing I hope that doesn't happen. I want the Flash movie to be its own entity and to do what they think is right for their story. But I want Spider-Man to do what's right for their story. They clearly seen the success of Spider-Verse and they want to emulate that but for live action. And you know what? That's getting me hyped. You giving me a live action Spider-Verse with the three actors that have portrayed spider-man hell throw in the actor uh who played the japanese spider-man in that uh toku uh toku series from japan uh that stan lee produced uh long back in the 70s and bring back nicholas hammond too uh, because he played spider-man back in the 80s i believe in a, a live action spider-man series bring them all all the live action spider-man actors bring them all back it, it, it's going to be a Spider-Man party. It's going to be amazing. And fans will freak. Bring back the Spider-Zord. It will be amazing. Uh, so <laughs> with that being said, guys, tell me, are you excited that Benedict, Benedict, Benedict Cumberbatch is coming back for Doctor Strange? I know that I'm, I messed up on that name somehow. I'm so used to saying Benedict Cumberbatch, and uh, now I've loved his name uh forgive me for that so <laughs> tell me your thoughts are you excited to see dr strange in the next spider-man movie are you hoping that maybe he's not too much mentoring him there i'm a little worried that they're going to that's how they're going to fix the peter parker's identity is now out there problem because i feel that like cheapens the ending of spider-man far from home but We'll see what happens. It happened in the comics, right? So I guess they'll they'll make it happen here. I'm hoping that's not the case. I want to see what the world would be like with a Spider-Man whose identity is now known. What? Well, how would Peter Parker deal with that growing up? I don't know. I think that could change things up for Spider-Man going forward. With that being said, guys, like this video. Please subscribe to my channel, especially if you're a huge fan of these superhero movies, Marvel or DC or otherwise. Uh, at Star Wars, Pixar, Disney. I'm a huge nerd of it all. So with that being said, until next time, take care.